Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now recently I installed Plex on my Nvidia Shield TV Pro and my Raspberry Pi 4. Now don't get me wrong, it's a great media player and server. The only problem is you need to pay to use it as a proper service. But the good news is there is an alternative and it works just as well flawlessly. Now this alternative is called Jellyfin and just like Plex it enables you to collect, manage and stream your media. So you can watch your media from a web browser on your computer, apps on Roku, Android iOS, including AirPlay. Android TV or Fire TV devices, also including the Chromecast. So in this video I'm going to show you how to install this free Jellyfish media server onto your Raspberry Pi 4. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks, so subscribe and hit the notification button. Now you can view files on your Jellyfish media server using a web browser or you can get the app on your phone or tablet. So here I'm using a web browser on my computer and straight away you can see I've got all my media here. I've got my videos, I can continue watching, I've got my latest movies, I've got my music and on the bottom you can see I've got my photos. Now if I go back to the top and click on the hamburger menu, I can access all my sub menus. You've got your movies, you've got your music and you've got your photos. Now if I go to the dashboard, You've got access to your server details and as you can see I'm on the Raspberry Pi version, operating system, architecture is ARM and I can restart and shut down the server. I've got my activity log and my various paths and here it gives me devices that are active and currently it's just this web browser on Chrome. Now further down I've got my general menu, I've got my users menu and libraries menu. Now the great thing is if we look at the playback menu you can see that hardware acceleration is enabled using the OMX decoder on our Raspberry Pi 4. We've also got a sub-menu for devices, activity and DLNA devices. Now if you go back to the home screen and try playing some media, now I think I've got some 4K media here, if I scroll down. As you can see it's running very smoothly, it's very sharp and this is at 4K. And if I click on the cog and select playback data, it'll bring the data up on screen. So you can see we're running at 4K resolution and we've only dropped 7 frames, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. And what I found most impressive was that I could jump in and out of the timeline. And it does it almost instantaneously without any issues. Now if you do experience any issues at 4K, you can change the playback rate to 1080p. Just simply click on the cog and select quality and select your playback rate. And it's as simple as that guys. So back on the home screen, I've also got a 1080p clip which runs equally, if not smoother, than the 4K clip. And if I bring up the playback data, you can see I'm running at 1080p with no issues. Now one thing to note here is that you should store your media on a USB stick or an external hard drive or NAS. Now if you do store them on the SD card, you're going to get a lot of stuttering and issues with playback. This is because the SD card can't keep up with the transcoding of the video files. So if you do get any issues with playback, that is the reason. Ok, now to install the Jellyfin server onto your Raspberry Pi, pop onto your Raspberry Pi 4 and here I'm using the Pi OS operating system. Open up a browser and head on over to jellyfin.org and scroll down the web page until you get to Debian and Ubuntu and I'm going to click on stable version. Now this should open up a little window with commands you need to type. So I'm simply going to copy the first command, so just highlight and make sure you get the whole command as it does scroll to the right and then simply right click and select copy and then we just simply open up a terminal window and paste in the command and then wait for it to complete. Now I'll just speed this up but it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. Now once that's done we type in sudo apt update and press enter and again I'll speed this up now at this point we need to type in sudo apt install jellyfin and press enter and wait for it to finish and then press yes to confirm and then again just wait for it to finish and it should take it under 5 minutes. So at this point you have completed the installation of jellyfin. But for hardware decoding to work on the Raspberry Pi we need to take a few more steps and the first of these is to add jellyfin user to the video group. So we type in sudo user mod hyphen a capital G video jellyfin and press enter. We then need to restart the jellyfin service for that to take effect. So we type in sudo systemctl restart jellyfin and press return. 
Now to get the maximum out of the Raspberry Pi 4 with the 4GB RAM, I'm going to max out the GPU performance by increasing the memory available to it. And to do that, I'm going to edit the config.txt file. So we type the following, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.txt and press return. And from here, we're going to scroll down to the bottom and type gpu underscore mem equals 512. So this will allow the GPU to use its maximum memory and give us maximum smooth performance in playback. Now you just press Ctrl X to save and exit and press yes to confirm. And now from here we need to reboot for all the changes to take effect. Now once it reboots, there's one final thing we need to do, and that is to allow read access to the USB stick. This is needed so that the Jellyfin server has read access to your media files on your USB stick. So as you can see here, I've opened up the file explorer on the Raspberry Pi, and you can see my SD card and its folders and contents with the media files. Now as an example, to give access to the Pi folder, I'm going to go to the terminal window and type the following command. So that's sudo chmod space hyphen capital R space 0777 space forward slash media forward slash pi and press return. Now ordinarily I wouldn't give this type of access because this is full access to that file system and normally you would just give read access. So to confirm access we just check the properties of the pi folder and click on permissions and you can see anyone can view, change and access the content. Now one of the final things we need to do is find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi so we can access it on the web browser. So let's type in IP space ADDR, hit return and my IP address is here. So just make a note of your IP address and now we can go back to our PC to access the Jellyfin server. So back on your PC, just open up a web browser and type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. And follow this by colon 8096, which is the port number. Press return and you should get the following screen. So from here you need to choose your language and I'm going to choose English UK. Click on next and then you'll be asked to put in a username and password. So I'm going to type in Jellyfin and the password I'm going to leave blank. Now you can add a password at a later stage. Click on next. And from here you can set up your libraries. But I'm going to click on next. I'm going to add my libraries later. From here we need to configure our metadata language. And I'm going to set up UK English. And then click on next. And leave these settings as they are. Click on next. And now finally click on the finish button. Okay, so now we just need to sign in with the username we created. So mine was Jellyfin. And click on sign in. Okay, so we are in. So the first thing we're going to do is enable hardware acceleration. So click on the side menu and scroll down to dashboard. And from here, we're going to scroll down to playback. And from the hardware acceleration pull down list, we're going to choose Open Max OMX. And make sure MPEG2 and MPEG4 is ticked. And then scroll down to transcoding thread count. Now by default, it's on auto, but I'm going to set this to max. And then finally, scroll down to save and save it. Now I'm going to do a quick setup of my libraries, so head on over to Dashboard and click on Libraries, and then from here, click on Media, Add Library, and choose the content type. I'm going to choose Movies. And now basically, you should have access to your SD card, so just browse your way down to your SD card. And that's it guys, it's as simple as that. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and maybe even a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.